you might have seen my video about the Neat Worker B XLR condenser mic, but Widget believe that Neat also makes a USB mic that's incredibly affordable and sounds great too? So let's try and figure out what exactly is happening with the Neat Widget. But before any of that, let me just say, if you're somebody who shares audio online with any regularity, whether that's streaming, podcasting, videos, work video calls, conference calls, whatever it is, something where you're regularly sharing, broadcasting, or streaming your audio, I really think that an upgraded microphone should be an absolute necessity, and a required investment if that's something that you're doing. And fortunately, if you're working within a budget and you don't wanna spend a whole bunch of money on XLR mics and mixers and interfaces and that whole thing, or you just don't have the patience or tech skills or whatever to do that, there are a lot of USB options to get you started. And this right here is the neat widget. And it is pretty neat, believe it or not. This is probably the most bizarre USB microphone I've ever seen. And I ordered it from Sweetwater for $35. Prices do change all the time. So if you want to know the most up-to-date price when you're watching this video, check the link in the description to see that. But these are very affordable microphones. And I say these because there are three different versions of the widget. And the only difference between them is how they look. They they all look very, very different. They have bold designs, I guess, to say the least. But the sound quality, the microphone capsule, the electronics inside are exactly the same between all three of them. So if you like the sound that you hear today, but you like the style of a different one, it should sound exactly the same. And not unlike with the Worker B microphone, the visual styling can probably be, I guess, controversial. Might be a word, polarizing, I guess. That's what we'll call it, polarizing because these definitely make a statement. If you just want a small microphone that's just gonna kind of sit out of the way, here's the Rode NT-USB Mini. It's a very small, almost invisible microphone that can just stay out of the way. No one's gonna notice that. With this, on the other hand, if you're on a video call, one of the first things, doesn't matter what the call is about, somebody's gonna say, what's the deal with the weird looking microphone that you're talking into? But right here you can see on the packaging, it says high definition, 24 bit, 96 kilohertz audio, perfect for podcasting, Skype specifically, and voiceovers. And if you remember my video about the Worker B, it came in this crazy heavy duty plastic packaging. The widget comes in this giant interesting packaging, which is a lot of plastic. They're very clear that it's all recyclable, so it will get recycled. I'm not a product packaging guy. I don't really care what the packaging looks like, but for the price, this is pretty interesting. And it's kind of a shame that these aren't sold in stores because you can imagine like how visually appealing it would be to see a whole wall of these clear boxes. But anyway, I've already opened it. I just put it back in here for the video. <laughs> Sorry to ruin the magic there. But I just wanted you to see what, what comes with it. So you, when you get this, you get your microphone, which is a pretty lightweight microphone. The base is plastic, the microphone is plastic. In the base here, you get a sheet of stickers, and then you get the instruction manual, which of course, because it's neat and they can't, which is why I like them, they can't just do things normally. It's like that thing, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. what's the best microphone of all? Oh, it's this one. You really don't need much more than that because it's plug and play. And Neat as a company is pretty interesting. So if you want to know more about their history, check out my Worker B microphone review because I dive into the company's history a little bit in that. But here we go. This is the microphone. And the reason it's designed this way, which I actually really like, there's a plastic, a very plasticky knob here. You can loosen that and then you can adjust the height of the microphone itself. I love this because it lets you position the microphone so it's going to be close to your mouth. For example, this microphone here, the Rode NT-USB Mini, I love this microphone. This is a really good sounding microphone, but it's so mini that when you set it on the desk, it's so far away from you that you don't end up getting the best sound quality. This microphone definitely sounds better when it's closer to you, but now it's far away. Whereas here, pretty much no matter how tall you are, how tall your desk is, whatever, you can adjust the microphone so that way it's going to be at exactly the right height. There's not much else to it. I got this specific design because I really like the atomic, uh, it looks like a retro 1950s, 1960s, like atomic age sort of thing. And I thought that was kind of cool. The base plate here, it kind of looks like there's a grill, almost like there would be a speaker or something, but there's nothing, there's no electronics in here at all. The only electronics are up in here. There's two 
areas of design that I think are missing, but I don't really have a problem with it considering how affordable the microphone is. One of them is that the cable is permanently attached, so you can't disconnect the cable. Like most USB mics, you can choose whatever cable you wanna use. It's not a big deal, this cable is a decent length, but if something happens, if it gets broken or damaged, the whole microphone has gotta go. That's a bummer. And the other thing is there's no headphone output. A number of USB microphones have headphone outputs which allow you to have zero latency monitoring. So while you're recording, you can monitor everything in exact real time. This doesn't have that. So if you wanna listen to what you're recording, you have to run it through software and then listen back. And there's really no way to get zero latency monitoring that way because you're sending the signal to the computer, it's getting processed and it has to come back to your headphones. And the, the just can't happen instantaneously. Fortunately, it's not really a big deal. Like if you're using this for Zoom calls or just basic streaming and stuff, it's really not a problem at all. Where it could become a problem is if you wanted to do like music vocals and you were trying to record with a track because even if there's a slight millisecond delay in what you're hearing versus what you're recording, it just kind of breaks your brain. So no headphone monitoring output, just a microphone to plug in and get going. So let's listen to the widget and see what it sounds like. Up until now, you've been listening to the Rode VideoMic NTG, which is my normal video mic when I'm recording my videos. However, instead of running it into the camera, it has been running into the computer via USB and into Adobe Audition with no processing or adjustments or anything like that. So I'm using the video mic NTG, so many names, and now we'll switch over to the widget. So this is the video mic NTG. And this is the neat widget. This is just plug and play. I connected it to the computer. It immediately showed up as an input in Adobe Audition and I pressed record. There's no processing and I'm about a fist distance, a fistance away from the microphone. That is an official unit of measurement, by the way. And this is it, this is how it sounds, straight out of the box. If I get a little bit further away from it and what it's picking up in the room, and if I get really close to it, this is what it sounds like. I'm not sure if there's proximity effect in effect here, or if I'm just totally peaking all the audio levels. If you wanna talk about plosives, we got Peter Piper pitched a podcast. As usual, I just have the microphone facing, you know, 45 degrees away from me and then I'm speaking past it and plosives shouldn't really be much of a problem. Visually, I think that this is interesting. You might hate it, but if you don't hate it, then I think you might really like it. And I, I do really like it. Since I got this for $35, the other USB mic that I've talked about that's in that price range is the Fafine K669B. Super catchy name. You might remember that video if you haven't seen it. That was also a really inexpensive USB mic that ended up being really impressive. I was blown away by how good that microphone sounded. It did not have the visual styling of this. It was sort of your more traditional, you know, black cylinder design. <laughs> I'd love to test this against that since they're in the same price range, but I actually gave that microphone to a friend after I made that video. So we'll put this one up against a couple other microphones. You already heard it against the Rode VideoMic NTG, but we'll also do it against the Rode NT-USB Mini, the classic Blue Yeti, and even off over here off screen, the Shure MV7. We'll start with the Rode NT-USB Mini because it is the least expensive of those options, even though it is significantly more expensive, $35, about $100. So this is the neat widget. I don't know why I have to snap every time. And this is the Rode NT-USB Mini, which does have some cool features built into it. It does have headphone output, so you can monitor with no latency. It also works with the Rode Connect app, which is free, and that will allow you to, to use multiple USB minis at the same time, and it kind of turns your computer into like a virtual Rodecaster, which is super cool. So there's some benefits built in there. There's headphone volume on here. There's a mute thing. However, what you might notice is like I said, since this is so mini, it's much more reverby around me here because you, you're picking up a lot more of the room tone than when I was able to be close to a microphone like the widget. So for this microphone to sound its best, you really do kind of need to be close to it to really bring out how good it is, which means it works best when it's mounted to a boom arm or something like that so you can position it very, very close to you. But if you're looking for simplicity, this one, will let you position the microphone exactly where you need it without any additional hardware, and that's pretty awesome. And the next microphone we're gonna to compare to is the Blue Yeti, the ubiquitous microphone in early YouTube and streaming days. 
And this is a very interesting comparison because, as you may or may not know, the founders of Neat were also the founders of Blue. They left the company several years ago and then formed a new microphone company. So comparing these two is actually a pretty interesting thing to do. And this Yeti is a couple years old. I purchased this before Blue was purchased by Logitech. So I'm not 100% sure if that changed the manufacturing of Yetis, but this for all intents and purposes, we could call the classic Yeti. And this is the blue Yeti in the cardioid pickup pattern, running into Adobe Audition with no effects, no processing, nothing like that. The Yeti being a larger microphone is kind of like the widget in that it lets you position the microphone directly in front of you a little more easily than something that's as small as this. And of course the Yeti can also be mounted on a boom arm. You can take it out of the stand and mount it on a boom arm. The widget cannot be mounted on anything other than what it comes with. The Yeti, what do these sell for? This one was about $100, depending on the model you get and the color you get, they could go up to like $120, $130, and then there's like an XLR edition too, but that's, that's a totally separate thing. So we'll say it's another $100 microphone, and that price does get you some extra features. You have headphone outputs, just like you do on the NT-USB Mini. You've also got multiple pickup patterns, so you can record in a different variety of scenarios and you have a gain knob on the back of the microphone so you can adjust not just your monitoring level for your headphones but the actual output of the microphone into your software or your stream you can do that directly from the microphone that's pretty cool none of these other ones really have that option for the most part and this is the classic blue yeti i want to make sure to include this because otherwise i would have blew it with this video this comparison video right here and speaking of sure let's compare the widget to the Shure MV7. And now we're back on the widget, but you might remember my review of the Shure MV7. It's an XLR and USB dynamic microphone. It's the most expensive one that we're gonna compare to today. So I bought the widget for $35. This one regularly sells for about $250. So I don't know that you're gonna normally compare these two, but you just kind of see if you notice a difference for the price. Now the Shure has a few bonus features if you're using it as a USB mic. It has an interface built in right here where you can adjust some of your volume levels, some of your monitoring levels. It does have headphone outputs and it has an app that comes with it that lets you do some equalization, some mixing, some processing right there in the app before sending it out to whatever software you're recording or streaming with. Now I won't be using any of that today. I'll be running it just into Adobe Audition like I have with all of the other microphones. So let's plug it in and switch over from the widget to the MV7. And now you're listening to the MV7. There really was no strategy between the comparisons that I ran today. They're just the other microphones that I had. But I think if you're somebody looking for a USB microphone, it's going to be very hard to not see or wonder about the Blue Yeti. So now you hear how that sounds. The Rode NT-USB Mini is an awesome option, especially because it is so small. It can easily hide away on your desk. But like I mentioned, you need to position it close to you to get the best sound. So that might include something like a boom arm. The MV7 is the most expensive microphone we're talking about today, but it also does have that XLR functionality. So if you do wanna use it with a mixer or an interface down the line, you'd be able to do that. But it does need some kind of mount uh, either a tabletop stand or a boom arm because it will not stand on its own. It does not come with a stand. So I hope you understand that because it can be an outstanding feature. Everything else notwithstanding. So let's jump back now to the widget. And I'm personally someone who's not only a big believer in working on upping your audio quality no matter what you're doing, but also in checking out all these different options because no matter what features you're looking for, what price point you're looking for, what style you're looking for, there are a lot of really good choices available today to kind of fit every one of those, you know, check all of those different boxes. And I think most people who are looking to spend just a little bit of money to up their USB audio game probably do want a really simple microphone, maybe something like the Fafine that I mentioned earlier. But if you want something that's a little more bold and a little different and just sort of isn't what everybody else has, this is definitely a pretty incredible option. And as much as I've been focusing on the visuals of this microphone, when it comes to any kind of video, your audio is as important, if not even more important than the visuals, because believe it or not, people will stick with bad looking video that sounds good longer than they'll stick with good looking video that sounds bad. You can never pay too much attention to your audio, but I hope you have been paying attention to this video because if the neat widget 
maybe isn't the microphone for you, it would be neat if you clicked on these widgets to check out some other budget microphones that might be the perfect mic for your setup.